Hey guys, welcome back to another interesting topic. Today's topic is about read-only memory. So before going to ROM, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and turn on your notifications so that we can get connected. So now coming to read-only memory. So read-only memory is a combinational circuit. Understand this point? Read-only memory is a combinational circuit. It's not a sequential circuit. Why? Because ROM is only dependent upon the address inputs. The output of the ROM is only dependent upon the inputs, not on the previous inputs as the sequential logic does. So now, ROM is also non-volatile because it pre preserves the content even the power is off. Okay, these are the two important points you must remember about the ROM that it is a combinational circuit and it's non-volatile. So now let us go to the internal structure and how the inputs and outputs will be there for ROM and what is stored inside the ROM. So the inputs of the ROM are address inputs. We give the address to our ROM, okay? As you can see over here, A0, A1 and AN are the address inputs for the ROM. And we will get the data present in that particular location that is D0, D1 and DN. So that is the outputs for our ROM. So, so the relation between the inputs and outputs that if we give n inputs, n inputs are being given and suppose say b outputs are there, then we have to construct a ROM of size 2 power n cross b. Let's say our n is 3 inputs, we are giving 3 inputs and the output is of 4, then we will get 8 cross 4 ROM. Okay? We will get 8 cross 4 ROM. read only memory stores the truth table of n inputs and b outputs combinational function inside it. So to understand this more clearly, let us take an example of a decoder with a polarity sign. So this is the truth table of a decoder which is having a polarity control. This A2 bit is a polarity controlled uh, polarity controller. As you can see it has 0 and 1. So now what does a decoder do? Decoder just selects. If you give 0, 0, it will select D0. If you give 0, 1, it will select D1. So, but that polarity sign is being decided by A2 bit over here. So we have three inputs and four outputs. As you can see, now let's say 0, 0. So D0 will be selected and the polarity of this will be based upon A2. So for example, 0, 0 is 0 over here and 0, 0 is 1 over here because the polarity is being changed. So for this, we are gonna uh, look the internal structure of a ROM so how a ROM will be there inside the block diagram so what will be the in inside this block diagram we are gonna look for this functionality okay now let's go into the internal structure of a ROM for this truth table we have the internal structure of ROM as such so as you can see in the diagram over here I have taken a decoder and the output is inverted over here and we have the word line so this horizontal lines are called as word line and whereas these vertical lines are called as bit lines okay this terminology is important so this word lines get selected whenever we give the input so whenever this for example 0 0 is given then y0 will be selected so 1 0 1 is given then y5 will be selected okay so we need to store the truth table so wherever the diode is there at that point we have a memory 1 okay this cell will store as a 1 this will be stored as 1 this will be stored as 1 1 and 1 and where the diode is not there it will be stored as 0 okay so now let us take an example from the truth table okay I'm considering 1 0 1 as the input and let's see how this internal structure works so let's give the input as 1 0 1 so what happens now when we give the 101 to the decoder, it will select Y5. Since the inverter is there, this will become low. So, as you can see, this has become low. So this will be selected. So whatever the values will be present over here, we will get it as output. So now, what are the values present over here? Since it's low, what happens is, it will bring the diode value to zero because it is low it will bring the diode value to zero whereas the next remaining cells will have the one which will be coming from the VDD so one one and zero one this will be transmitted to the inverters what we will get as the output is zero because it will be inverted zero zero one and zero so what was our truth table so truth table output was zero zero one zero so we have given the diode connections according to our truth table okay in previous generations where the ROM was 
uh, use we need to connect the diodes using the soldering Every, we need to con di connect the diode according to our truth table so it was a hectic task now we don't use this all, all we use is a programmable ROM we will get from the market we will just program the ROM according to our usage but now but in the previous days they used to solder it and for testing they they used to remove the solder and keep the diodes accordingly and test for the different inputs that was a hectic task so this is uh, internal of a ROM based upon the diodes we have uh, one more ROM based upon the MOS transistors it is a very similar to this but instead of diodes we will be using a transistors so let's have a look at it so as you can see in the diagram just the diodes have been replaced by a transistor so whenever this word line is selected what happens is whenever this word line is selected this gate will be turned on and this bit line will go to zero okay suppose this word line has been selected then this will give the power to the gate and it will connect this bit line this bit line to ground so as a result we will get zero and we'll get our output as one okay because of the inverter so it functions like this so we have discussed that the ROM is non-volatile that means it stores the data even the power is turned off so what if we want to change the data inside the ROM so ROM data is being manufacturer is giving the data whatever present but what if we want to change the data we as a user want to have a different data in the ROM you know what will you do we will use a different types of programming ROMs okay there are programmable ROM EEPROM uh, double EEPROM and flash memory okay so these are different types of ROM available in the market. So this ROM, we cannot change the data because it is being given by the manufacturer. Whatever data present inside the ROM is fixed. So manufacturer decides what's there and this we can just program it once, only once. But only once it's not good. So we want more uh, flexibility. So we got erasable ROM. So we can erase it by UV light. But UV light, we need to remove the chip and keep it in the UV light. I will discuss about EEPROM in a complete different video. So don't worry about it. I will discuss how it's done, how the UV lights, how it's done exactly uh, based upon the Flutox and um, FAMOS devices will be used. And in flash memory, we will be using, instead of UV light, we will be using electrical, okay? Electric charge to change it. So this is are the flash memories. So one doubt will be there that where does the ROM use? A ROM is basically used in BIOS, you know, for the booting up. BIOS, BIOS data is stored inside the ROM. Uh, whenever we boot the computer, this program gets from the ROM and boots up the computer. I hope you get it. Uh, so if this video is valuable for you, you can hit that subscribe button and turn your notification on. And thanks for watching. And if you have any doubts, you can comment down below. I will respond within 24 hours. Thanks for watching.